So the other day I was on my way to my drug dealer's house when my boy Jeffy Casanova hit me up and he was like, Hey JMO, what's up with this Snowpiercer movie, dog?" And I was like, what you mean Jeffy, that's a good movie? And he was like, yeah, maybe I guess, but it's totally insane, dog." And I thought to myself, hmm, is it? See, here's the thing, dear viewer. I saw Snowpiercer when it came out, and I remembered it being pretty good, and it had some scattered images in my brain, but Jeffy's assertion as to its fundamental insanity left me a little bit puzzled, so I was like, huh, I'd better rewatch this movie. And it turns out we were both right. I still thought this movie was great, but it is also bonkers, with a nutty concept, weird characters and performances, some brutal violence, and a tone that is somewhere between a grim fairy tale and a wacky anime. Take all of this, wrap it up in an admittedly ultra-simplistic metaphor for class division, and throw in the fact that it's directed by the great Bong Joon-ho, and you've got a cinematic experience that's unique, fun, and mad as a goddamn hatter, so long as you can forgive its foibles, the primary of which is the premise, if you care about logic, because the movie takes place in a snowy climate apocalypse where the only surviving sect of humanity exists on a train that continually survives the globe. I feel like we could point out a million and one reasons why this is absurd, but that's the thing, baby. This movie is absurd. It's operating on fairy tale logic, or like anime logic. So you just have to let that part of your brain relax and enjoy the ride. So within this train, the setup is pretty simple. You've got poor people at the back who are tired of being treated like dirt and the rich people in the front. Therefore, they attempt a coup to take over the train, led by Captain America and his vivid cast of cartoon characters. You got this silent Bruce Lee guy, Carrot Top, a drug-addicted Korean engineer and his telepathic daughter, and an angry black lady, among others. Let the party commence. And so the narrative of the film follows our merry travelers as they make their way up the train and gawk at how the richy riches live, eating sushi and having spa days, interspersed with some grisly violence as they take on the soldiers, all in the name of taking over the train. This premise also gives the director space to play in very different visual and tonal scenarios. One car will be a schoolhouse where children sing propaganda songs about the train, another will be a pleasant greenhouse where old ladies do some knitting, and yet another will be a drugged up sex party that looks really fun. <laughs> On down the yellow brick road until they get to the engine itself and the wizard behind the proverbial curtain. We'll talk about the big payoff there at the end of the video just in case you haven't seen it. But what truly gives life to this movie outside of the wild premise and tone are the actors. Chris Evans is the straight man here and he works well with the dark past that gets revealed later on and gives him more dimension than you'd think, but everyone else is just going for broke and gonzo character performances. Special props to Song Kang Ho as the engineer and especially Tilda Swinton, who understands the tone of this film perfectly and summons all her demented cartoon energy for the best performance in the movie. Although I do also have a soft spot for Andrew, who is just so sympathetic, and who you old timers might recognize as Spud from Train Spotting. My only real complaints come into play in the ending scenario, but if you haven't seen the film, I urge you to turn this off right now, because even though the movie is flawed, it's still 100% worth watching, and there's no point in spoiling the reveal. And they'll still be here when you get back, so. Spoilers incoming, a 3, 2, 1, a biggity boom. Turns out it's half Truman Show after all, not only because the insurrection was socially engineered, but because it was engineered by Ed Harris. This is such a funny reveal to me, in a way that might not translate if you haven't seen the Truman Show, which you should. But anyway, this is sort of where it all falls apart actually, because the explanations given just are not satisfactory to me. Why do they keep the poor at the back? of the train in the dirty cold, abuse them and torture them and feed them bugs because humanity needs conflict or something? The explanation Ed Harris gives is honestly so nebulous and so philosophically generic that it fails to resonate in my brain right now with any specificity and I just watched this movie. 
It's not that I refute the idea of conflict and danger being necessary for survival in some abstract way, I just think that in this case it is catastrophically underwritten, so much so that I have to question the entirety of the scene, and therefore the narrative thrust of the whole film, since this whole revolution is based on this underwritten philosophy. He would have just been better off saying, we keep you back there because we need spare parts. Which is another part of the reveal, that they kidnap poor kids to serve as engine parts. But I suppose I'm better off taking my own advice here, rather than be frustrated and just chalk it up to anime logic, or the fact that everyone on the train is insane anyway. Whatever. The real hilarity though is the end end. Because our heroes blow up the train and everyone is apparently dead except for the telepathic Korean girl and a small child. They have no supplies, no winter gear, presumably no survival skills, you know, since they were born on the train, and yet the movie plays this scene like it's a hopeful moment for mankind, punctuated by the appearance of a polar bear. This is supposed to mean like, oh, life finds a way, and it's getting less cold, so humans might survive now. I get that you can think about this in an allegorical or metaphorical space, apropos of the fairy tale undercurrent of the film, but the reality of the situation is that two woefully unprepared children are now facing a hostile wasteland existence, alone, and a predator has just appeared. What are they gonna go repopulate the earth now? In the snow? It is so ludicrous. And that's the ending. And and I laughed. You know what though, this movie is great. In retrospect, I almost love it more because the ending is just so bonkers. It made me smile, possibly for all the wrong reasons, but the whole thing is just so unique and memorable. I love the insane tone, the general absurdist imagination of the whole thing, the incredible character work from the cast, and I just couldn't recommend it more. It's something special, and I'm glad I gave it another shot. Thanks, Jeffy, and thank you, viewer, for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully sometime soon, I'm feeling okay, and we've got a couple things cooking. Peace, love, and polar bears, and I'll catch you soon. Happy holidays.